Hey guys, Marlon here with Amish Country Insider. Today, we have an opportunity to, to talk with Ernie Hershberger from Homestead Furniture here in Mount Hope, Ohio. Uh, Abner Henry is actually your, your luxury furniture line, right? So uh, this is what's interesting about Ernie and Abner Henry. Probably about a year ago or so, I heard that you guys had the chance to do a collaboration with the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, right? We are standing in the gallery of that exclusive seven piece, very limited edition. And Ernie is gonna take us through this. We're gonna talk about each of these pieces, the art and the furniture. And it's gonna be a real, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a real uh, joy. So Ernie, tell us, how did all this come about? Did, did you chase the Met down? How did this actually happen? So no, they actually um, reached out to us. And uh, one day um, I had my general manager show up in my office and say that he just received a call from the Metropolitan Museum of Art. And he said, the Met. Uh, and I first words out of my mouth were, well, who's the Met? <laughs> and... Uh, now I had heard about the Met before, but uh, didn't probably realize that how prestigious they were till we got deeper into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they offered us an opportunity to create a home collection uh, for them. And we get this question asked a lot where, you know, that the Metropolitan Museum of Art come to you guys with the drawings and the paintings and, uh, you know, we need you to create this and build this for us. And the answer is they didn't. They uh, reached out to us through a global search and uh, of course, I had the same question to them. Why did you come to a conservative Amish guy in Amish country with this mm -hmm. opportunity? And they said, well, we searched the globe and we wanted somebody American made, totally custom, great design, understand scale, are on the cutting edge of color, uh, certified green, mm -hmm. uh, all of those. And we kept checking off the right boxes and they called us and uh, they said, here's our idea. We'd love to uh, have you guys create a home collection for us and um, here's the museum. And they gave us a clean sheet of paper and we traveled to New York, wow. came home with 5,000 plus uh, photos of artifacts and storehouses of artifacts that people hadn't been in for decades. And uh, we started uh, the whole design concept. And originally we started off with a um, 3,000 year old piece of Egyptian pottery that had a very intricate design. And we were looking at it like a normal piece of furniture where you know, you use inspiration from the design itself or something, you know, antique or whatever, and you pull from that design and you use it as an applique uh, pattern into a door or drawer. And that's how we started off. Um, about a year into it, we, uh, uh, I, I kept asking the team, I guess, to elevate it. I mean, the more I got involved with the Met, the more I realized uh, what kind of prestigious, you know, museum they are in the global uh, uh, sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I pulled him aside. I said, guys, as a little kid, uh, you know, as a fourth decade woodworker, I'd always imagined that at some point in the future, I built something really special, like a special piece of furniture. And uh, I'd sign my name on it and sell it for some bukus of money or whatever. <laughs> and um, so I, I challenged the team with that. And from there, we ended up uh, with these seven iconic paintings. And uh, then from there, we uh, turned it into a limited edition type of collection. And um, as time went on, normally a piece of furniture, like in Abner Henry, um, we'll design 25 new pieces in the spring and the fall and introduce them as new collections. Here, mm -hmm. um, with drawing inspiration from the paintings themselves, completely different aspect of how we uh, go about designing a piece of furniture in a sense. And we were, Two and a half years into it, uh, missed two deadlines of launch and uh, a solid roadblock. I mean, it was like a wall from here to heaven in a sense almost. Uh, we could not get around it, past it. Uh, and we'll get into it a little bit when we get into the spiritual side, but this is completely different than, you know, the final 10% of scale is you just follow some sequence and patterns in a sense and there it is didn't work here. Mm -hmm. And so we were at a standstill for weeks and I finally ended up having to pray. And, and you know, as a praying man, I'm embarrassed to talk about that because 
you know, I would pray for our, our soul, our kids' soul, my soul, the church's well-being, the country's safety, you know, all that stuff, um, mm-hmm. and never pray ever in 32 years, uh, God help me with a piece of furniture. Just, I thought it was below his, deme- you know, his means. I discovered through this whole process that God really does care. He, he gives us a talent, wants us to be great stewards of it, and he wants us uh, to include him in all aspects of our life. And so after a couple of weeks of that standstill, I did pray. I said, Lord, I need help. Uh, nothing's going to move. It was to the point that this collection was not going to be uh, available to the public because it was in an incomplete state. And once I got into that side and, and God actually revealed to me, and we'll start with the uh, Van Gogh here, uh, the spiritual story of it, um, everything else came together. And so quite humbling, also wow. very challenging. Wow. So I'm going to back up for a second. Did you guys choose the seven pieces of art as well? No. Well, yes, sorry. Yes, okay. we did. We chose every, all the art, all the uh, inspiration side, all that was through our engineering and design teams uh, here at Atmer Henry. Wow. My goodness. Uh, well, let's jump into the Van Gogh. What, what are we looking at here? So this, uh, this is the most literal interpretation of any of the paintings itself. So if you look at the sunflower uh, itself, the painting, and then here we have a version of our sunflower interpretation of it. When we get into the rest of the pieces, there's not a, as direct a correlation than what this is. It's much more spiritual, but this was the first piece that had happened to me you know, through uh, prayers, uh, walked up to here one day, and this was weeks after nothing had been moving. And I looked into this, and if you look at all the hand grindings that are going on here, and I, I uh, instantly recognized it as every day in my life is different. Mm-hmm. And no one day is the same. The, this was, this, these are all the days of her life. And then uh, this brass that's a part, we, we actually, it's more than an inlay. It's like um, adhered into the metal itself. And the only way you can have that accomplished is to heat this up, interior up to 1200 degrees, so it's white hot. And then we brush the, uh, the brass right into that white hot heat. And so that was a personal reflection of me. Am I willing to be refined by fire? Am I willing to let people speak into my life? And then my brain instantly went to James 2, verse 22, where it talks about us wrapping our actions around our faith. And that's what we did here with when we look at this metal structure. We're wrapping our actions around our day by day. We're refined by fire. And this is us uh, revealing our faith in through our works in a sense. Mm-hmm. And I instantly knew that final 10% that we couldn't make work, this final piece on the top, instantly my brain knew what we were going to do. My, uh, my mind went to... Uh, Matthew 5 verse 48 where it says that we should be perfect like our Father in heaven is perfect. If we translate perfect from Greek it talks about compassion. Mm -hmm. And so we can be more compassionate and my brain just told me put just a plain sheet of grass on top and uh, we um, sandblast at these jagged edges on the ends and that's our imperfect nature in our journey of trying to be more compassionate while at the same time we're fully revealed of our day-to-day activity of what we're doing. There's no hiding behind a, you know, a silo or whatever where people, you've built this facade. Uh, that, that's not reality in life. Right. And so when we connect that to what happened with Van Gogh's life, in his most severe depression is when he actually painted one of his most vibrant paintings of his career. Wow. And so he was trying to get out of that depression cycle and the darkness of the world and that's what's happening here i mean you look at the brass in here you put light to this this just explodes in color and yet it's very revealing of how it's going on in our life and that's the whole personal connection that once we got through the prayer side that god revealed all that and that happened with every piece after that wow well let's let's move on these are nesting tables that are used in this painting or or that you built from the painting Tell me about the painting and also all of the symbolism inside these, uh, these tables. So when you look at the painting, uh, Monet uh, painted his family in a garden setting. And the garden is still, you can still to this day tour uh, Monet's garden. And this is his wife and his child. And when you think about that uh, peaceful, serene uh, setting with a child, uh, you know, relaxed, and totally uh, at ease and safe in his mom's bosom there. And so that was the whole idea of turning uh, this into nesting tables. 
And uh, we have 24 karat gold in the grain of the large top, which is a representation of dad, the husband, the homemaker, uh, the protector, the supplier, all that stuff that goes in. And this mm -hmm. was a huge, huge challenge for us. This, the, to our knowledge uh, in history, we could not find anything that would tell us how to put real 24 karat gold into the grain itself. And uh, so with lots of trial and error, I have thousands of dollars of gold floating around in the universe because of all the trial and error. I mean, they come with a little vial of gold dust that was, you know, like this. And $1,800 later, poof, that was gone until we finally figured out how to do it. And here's the interesting spiritual story behind all this also with the gold is uh, they called me in my office, the engineers, and they said, we figured out how to put the gold in the grain, but it's not going to work because when it's off light, it's completely brackish and brown. And when it's in the light, it shines like we want it to. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'll come down and take a look at it. And so I was walking to the shop. This was, I was mulling this through my brain. And when I walked up to it, I instantly knew it's like, I, I, I said, guys, this is, this is perfect. And they're like, how can this be perfect? And I said, when we're in Christ, we shine in the light when we're on the dark side, we're brackish and brown. And so that's wow. a representation now of that. So we have gold there. Now, wow. mom, here, platinum. We did the same concept. Once we discovered how to do the gold, we did the same thing with platinum. Platinum is more expensive than the 24 karat gold. Mm -hmm. Great representation of mom, her worth, her, uh, uh, you know, what she portrays to the family, keeping the glue together. Where do mm -hmm. kids go when they get sick or they hurt? Right. Directly to mom. And right. so... Just a nice uh, representation of that. And then underneath there, these are 24 karat gold overlay. So all kinds of history of how to do that. We've done that throughout our career too. But those legs are golden representation of our kids. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, God gave us talents. He wants us to be stewards of it, of all these earthly things that we're responsible for. But in the big scheme of things, the only thing that we're going to take with us to heaven is our kids. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's most important anyhow. And so I, I, wow. when you step back and look at this and look at the painting of what Monet was trying to be, depict, just a great combination put together and a very strong spiritual story with that. I love it. It's, it's just beautiful. My goodness. Boy, thank you. Well, let's move on to the, uh, the Severine table. Uh, this is a very different kind of art, right? Yeah. It's, it's on metal, is that yes. right? Yes, it's a, it's a uh, pointillism uh, painting from Surat. And uh, when we were up at the Met, um, it's a large metal painting, and it's just a series of dots that basically plays tricks with your brain or your eye, in a sense, and it's where the images come from. And so, very famous painting called The Circus Show, and they're doing a little sideshow on the outside to draw attention into the main arena. And uh, well, here's what's really interesting. This is where we drew the inspiration from. So first of all, pointillism, where all the blocks, these different sized blocks, and then all the different hats here are a representation from all the different uh, uh, cultures in the world. And so what we did is we created different lengths to each one of these blocks as a representation of all the different blocks, or a culture, I should say. And then each individual block is a family. And so we've got multiples of different pieces in each block. And then we use an antique oxidation okay. to let the wood express itself. And so in, in woodworking, if you have a tree that's at 6,000 feet elevation, another tree at 2,000 elevation, they have different soil kind of different mineral. And so they express themselves differently, even though it's the same species. Mm -hmm. Same way here, we're all family. Dad is different from mom, mom different from kids, all the kids are wired differently, right? All different character traits, and yet we coexist as a family. And so this is the family, and then the different length of blocks are all the different uh, cultures. The trombone, we picked up the trombone in the middle of the painting. These are mm -hmm. solid brass trombones, and those are my end caps, basically of the globe in a sense. I tell people I would want this piece to be in every presidential office in every country as a peace symbol because this is what it says to me. So families, different cultures, mm -hmm. be coexistent and accept each other's culture with love and peace throughout and let's just coexist together. And that's what this piece tells me. And I really, and this, wow. you know, I, t I was telling this story before, uh, you know, the Israeli war and the Ukraine war and stuff like that, but we just need to learn to be acceptable of each other and, and, and coexist peacefully. That's fantastic. My goodness. Well, this is a, a bar piece, right? Built mm -hmm. off of a painting of 
the guy's wife, yes. right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the painting and, and, and then this unbelievable piece of glass and, and everything around that. Yeah, so uh, Clint was a famous painter and he was commissioned by a husband to paint his wife, Serena. And this is a very uh, delicate painting in a sense, has a lot of motion movement and then the dark head at the top. And out of that, we created this awesome bar cabinet that has some really uh, uh, fine woodworking going on with one piece wide. Uh, it's in white oak and it goes from the bottom all the way around the top, all in one piece. And uh, so that's a work of art in itself with a what we consider a double compound curve out of hardwoods. And then the glass is a, a, a work of art in itself too because when you get to the two distinct different patterns, this is not doable in the, in the glass world. So we were told okay. about a half a dozen times <laughs> and we kept pushing through, finally found a Polish immigrant that was willing to work with us and we hand carved the pattern into a form and then poured liquid glass into that to actually create the glass. Wow. But the whole spiritual story that goes with this is also, so hand blown decanter, that's our individualism. So every person yeah. is different and each one of these will be unique in its own sense, but wow. it will also have the same uh, you know, physical look in a sense. Mm -hmm. the, the, this is us down here or me when I reflect my life is as a kid growing up, it was dark and murky. You couldn't really see through it. You come up here to, this is a distinct line in the glass with a different pattern that lets you see deeper into the cabinet. That's to my illustration of when I found out I was a sinner, lost, searched, found Christ, and now I have a living hope through my faith that I can see uh, and get the reward in heaven and see deeper into the whole Godhead. But this is a beautiful cabinet that has all this going on for it, beautiful interiors, and has a great spiritual story that goes with it as we struggle through the final design of this. Wow, it is absolutely gorgeous. I, I'm, I, the, the two different kinds of, of glass just totally blow my mind. Uh, I, I, I'm just Yeah, that's I'm really special. Um, lot of R&D in creating a piece of glass that has two distinct different patterns in the same sheet, but that's like us in our life. I mean, we're still the same person, yeah. born again, but we have different actions and we can see deeper into the, into the oh, Godhead. That's so great. Well, this is a 10 and a half foot table that just, it, it's, it's absolutely just so beautiful. Uh, tell us about the painting and, and about this table here as well. So uh, people ask me all the time, uh, what, what's my favorite piece? Mm -hmm. And uh, I tell them it's not a fair question. <laughs> But uh, this would probably be the piece, well, this would be the piece I put in my office if I, if I have a big enough office. But uh, the, it's, a, it's a Degas uh, painting, dance class, lots of motion going on, and even like the mirror, you can see into the other room, and it's got all kinds of stuff going on. But as we worked through this, we picked up the engineered wood with the waves, got multicolor in here, different shadows that it plays out. And then if you just look at the cantilevered effect, I mean, it has a lot of engineering here to keep it from falling on its face. But this is what it tells, talks to me spiritually when we got in, into that side of it is I'm one of these guys that I hate goals. A goal okay. in life just doesn't make sense. I was always taught to be a great steward of, of the talent that God gave us. And so when I set goals, then I stop and I celebrate them. Mm -hmm. And uh, that just never made sense. My, my, and I've seen so many teams and even our own teams where they hit that goal and stop. Why not be a great steward and just keep going and see where God and takes you and where, he, where you end up. But mm -hmm. So the whole goal side of when you think about your day's schedule, we all have schedules and we want to accomplish something. And then what happens when we don't meet that schedule or something and we blame or shift or pout or whatever? Well, this is our schedule, the ebb and flow and the wave. When you look at all this that's going on, that's our schedule in our day. And, uh, you know, go with the flow. The steel is the weight that, that gives us strength. There's walnut on the inside here, and this is grounding. Wood is very grounding. And mm -hmm. then the brass inlay is our spirit. And then the glass is the stretch. And so I tell people, you know, make a schedule. Uh, stop, stop doing goals. Let it flow. Stay grounded. Let your spirit take over. And yeah. then stretch. Don't stop. Just keep going and let God control the outcome. And this is this this piece here. Love to have it in my office, but wow. it's a great. It is deal. beautiful. It's so beautiful. Uh, this right here 
has to be probably my favorite piece uh, from the little bit of time that I've spent here with you. Uh, the, the color and the, just the sheer raw beauty in this is just amazing to me. Uh, you, you call this the Coralie cocktail table, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And this is built off of a Renoir. Yeah. Tell us more about this. So this was a very controversial painting in its time era because uh, of a lady being set up in such a regal setting. Um, and, you know, I still, I, I, it's hard for me to fathom the segregation and that type of stuff that went on in those early days. But, so very controversial in its setting. But when we, we tried to capture the whole beauty of the, the Normandy coast where it was painted on, the ebb and flow of the waves, and then this lady that's set up in a regal setting like that, we wanted a very regal piece of furniture or art in a sense. And then we picked up the uh, wicker underneath here with, with metal overlaid with brass, and then this unbelievable piece of glass that is extremely, extremely hard to do. And it's like a huge marble that's, you know, 48 inches in diameter and mm -hmm. one inch thick with all this color going on. But here's the spiritual side. Oh, this, this, this piece of glass is what I imagine in my mind what planet Earth looked like before creation. It was dark and void like the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And what's the first thing that, we, uh, that the Bible says? God said, let there be light and right. there was light. This is what I think he saw. All wow. this color, all this motion that was going on. And out of this, he created planet Earth that we're on. And it's beautiful because it started off like this in a beautiful setting. And then, of mm -hmm. course, underneath here, there's three strands. That's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And it's the whole grounding of uh, the whole planet itself. Mm -hmm. And we have life. And this, this piece, you put this in natural light, <laughs> it ebbs and flows. It's, it's an unbelievable wow. piece of, uh, of, of, of glass. It's fantastic. It's so, it's so gorgeous. Uh, so the last piece happens to be a mirror, right? It's, yep. it's made out of brass. The, uh, the story on this... Uh, Velasquez. On the Velasquez painting is really incredible all by itself. But what you did with the piece of brass on this is just, just incredible. And I don't think, if I remember right, Ernie, you said this, to your knowledge, has never been done in history before, right? So, by the way, I, I just have one little... Uh, little segue. Often when, when we're doing these, these videos, uh, I, I try often to bring in uh, a Dutch word ju just for fun. And the word for mirror is going to be that word today. And Ernie, how do you say the word mirror in Dutch? Een spiegel. Een spiegel. Yep. So it's, it's really, really a great Amish word to say. Uh, but now, jump into the Velasquez story and then also uh, everything about the mirror. So this is my most favorite, and probably because of the whole spiritual implication that goes with it and a self-reflection. And so when you look at the painting, the famous Velasquez painting and a mirror, how's, how's that all tied together in the correlation of it? But the history on here is that Velasquez painted his slave in a regal setting as a practice session to paint the Pope. That's what history wow. tells. We don't have absolute 100% proof on that, but that's, what, that's the hearsay that we hear. Mm -hmm. And so after he saw his slave in a regal setting like this, he set him free. And when we wow. were in New York in April, the Met was actually uh, setting up a gallery for this slave that's now free. And he's, of course, dead now, but has a, is also famous with his own gallery just because somebody set him free, lifted him up. And right. so that's the reflection. I think there's no better example of a mahogany frame and then brass. And then, like you said, to our knowledge, this has never been done. That in you know, Egyptian times, you can find brass mirrors, but mm -hmm. they could never polish them to this level mm -hmm. with the equipment that they had and, well, or the grid of paper. Mm -hmm. This is uh, hand uh, uh, polished up to 6,000 grit. To give you an example, in woodworking, wow. the finest that we sand is 150, uh, 150 grit. Oh here we did 6,000 grit. And so here's, the, here's what we discovered. In, in uh, uh, creating a mirror of glass, you grind glass flat, and then you put silver behind it, and then the glass is just a carrier of the reflection. It has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. In brass, as we kept polishing, it's self-reflected of itself. This is 3 8 solid brass of the highest quality brass you can find in the marketplace. And the more we polish it, 
the deeper it got. It looks like it's two and a half, three feet deep right now. Mm -hmm. And it self-reflects of itself. So that's the self-reflection that we have to continue to ask ourselves is are we like this guy here that had a slave that he depressed or then, then recognized him as an equal and then lifted him up and set him free. Mm -hmm. And like people have said to me over the years, oh, why don't you go home, look in the mirror, look in your eyes, look in your heart, see if you like what you see. Are you egotistically pushing people down or are you a servant leader and getting underneath people and then helping them for I and rise. And wow. so I get to say the same thing, same thing here to people around the world uh, is come look in the mirror, look in your eyes, look in your heart and see if you like what you see. Wow. It is, it is just, it's incredible. I, I, I don't want to act like I know anything about art, but what you guys have built here is just absolutely amazing. Uh, the, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is how, uh, by the way, how limited of a limited edition are these pieces? How many pieces are there going to be, Ernie? So, oh, seven uh, pieces in the collection. That's the perfect biblical number. Mm -hmm. And then how many times are we supposed to forgive each other? 70, 70 times, times seven. seven. Yeah. So that's uh, 490 total. So 70 of each will never repeat, never make another one, won't even do the same uh, species or colors or whatever. It'll be completely closed, limited okay. edition. And so I have your perfect peace and forgiveness collection here with wow. seven of each, never more than 70, 490 in total. And uh, so this is our forgiveness collection. That's amazing. Did, did, um, did the Met help you with this design or did this come out of you and your team? This was totally us and our team. They gave us a completely open uh, plain sheet of paper and said, Here's the Met, here are the uh, storehouses. You have full access to anything and everywhere that you want. Draw inspiration and create a collection or a home collection for us. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, we have an awesome team. I, it, it shows, it's, it's, I, it's, it's hard to put into words when you know some of the stories behind the piece and the art, it's, it's just amazing. To think that it's coming out of Mount Hope, Ohio with an Amish guy, uh, you know, steering the boat behind it. It's, it's just fantastic. Guys, thank you very much for being here with us, uh, for hanging on. Uh, if you have any other uh, questions or, or would like to see more, learn more about the, uh, the Abner Henry and Met uh, uh, collaboration, uh, you can go to abnerhenry.com. Okay. And you can always call the shop here. Uh, you can get the, you know, the phone number there as well. So you can talk to, uh, to, to Ernie and his team. They are fantastic. Guys, thank you very much. And Ernie, thank you very much for taking us through all this. Thank you.